Hello and welcome back to Brit Sci-Fi Online from the National Space Centre. Uh, no countdown because we were busy behind the scenes setting up this uh, next uh, session. We are completely live, so uh, we are joined by some fantastic guests. So we're going to need questions from you guys. So if you are joining us, uh, don't forget, drop your questions into the comments. Uh, we can see them and then we can share those as well. Uh, don't forget, if you want to get involved, let us know where you are. Um, let us know what you're up to. And also, if you are a cosplayer, player uh, or you're a costumer uh, do drop a photograph onto the Facebook event page you'll find we're running a competition this weekend because obviously when we do live events one of the highlights is to see all the amazing costumes and cosplayers uh, at the events and we can't see you this weekend so if you want to drop a photograph uh, of you in costume and cosplay uh, into the competition uh, um, uh, post on the Facebook event page uh, we'll be picking one at random we're not choosing one that's better than any others because they'll all be fantastic we'll be picking one at random to win an annual pass to come and visit us at the National Space Centre as we open next Saturday so go to our Facebook event page look for the lovely image of the Cyberman uh, and underneath there drop us a picture of yourself in costume or cosplay uh, and then uh, everybody can see how fabulous you look and talking about fabulous I've never felt so un underdressed in all my life as I'm about to do as we're about to introduce two fantastic guests Kristen and Meg hello good morning hello good morning. There. you look stunning thank you I'm so thank so you. so jealous that I didn't even think about putting anything I mean literally my eyes I brought my my, my suitcases with me this morning so uh, that's where my costume is <laughs> Uh, it, it was a flash from the past having to get up early to do the makeup. We haven't done it in over a year now. <laughs> uh, proper con feels this morning. <laughs> How long has it been since the two of you have seen each other at events? Two years. Oh, yes, about two years. And and do you, when when you cosplay or when you costume together, do, do you do the same genre or do you do different things? We tend to do, well, a bit mixture of both. We've done groups together. We also do our own thing as well. Yeah. What? And it's been weird because we usually see each other like bi-annually, like once in May, once in October. So to have not seen each other for two years is really weird. Yeah. Um, and Grayson, we always see each other at, uh, at, at the MCM, the, the big yes. Comic Con events. And you always look stunning and you always come and visit me and I still feel dowdy and I always wear the same <laughs> outfit. And I've been locked down for 14 months and I still have, haven't made anything new. <laughs> no, I, I started at the beginning of the first lockdown and it's still unfinished. Yeah, <laughs> I had I had the the uh, the impulse to do it, but it kind of tapered off. But we'll, we'll talk about that more a bit later. Yeah, no, absolutely. So um, there are people here joining us that possibly have never heard about what is cosplay. Uh, so would you actually? I'll tell you what. Let's introduce you both first. So, um, uh, uh, Christine, if I could ask you just to tell us a little bit about uh, who you are, what costumes you've made, the background that you come from, and and. Well, just just an introduction, really, uh, to uh, Metamorphica, really. Um, yep, yeah, I'm Kristen, aka Metamorphica Cosplay. I have been cosplaying for over twenty years now, so showing my age a bit there. Um, I mostly cosplay from video games now, but I have dabbled in film, TV, and comic book as well. Um, as you can see, I'm a bit of a geek <laughs> behind me. Um, yeah, I started uh, in 1997 when I was doing my fashion degree. So that was a help. Also with my mother, te she was a tailoress, so she was able to teach me a lot. Um, and then it's just gone from there, really. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, the IT guy is off screen at the moment going, I'm sorry, there's no way that you've been doing this for 20 years. <laughs> so there you go. He, he can't believe you did a degree in 97 it's it's mm -hmm. does we don't believe it uh, and how about you Meg how how did you get into it and and how long and and where should people go if they want to find out about your cosplay so I'm Meg um I've been cosplaying now since 2014 um and Kristen was one of the first people I ever met at a convention because she was cosplaying the beautiful uh Asari from Mass Effect and I fangirled like crazy and um from there it kind of just yeah it just spiraled um i do makeup i'm a, I'm a qualified makeup artist and i've worked on a few short films and adverts um but i'm a massive geek at heart and i just want to create creatures and do awesome makeups so anything from anime comic books games 
um, done lots of things from Dragon Age. And yeah, I think the best thing for people to do if they want to find out about me or Kristen Moore is we've got pages on both Facebook and on Instagram. And my nickname for the cosplay community and makeup is Megusa. Fantastic. We'll drop the links to your Facebook pages into the conversation so people will be able to click on after the session, obviously, uh, and go and check you guys out. Uh, I've been watching Glow Up, so I know an MUA. Yes. <laughs> I'm obsessed. Oh, totally obsessed. Although I do often find myself looking at it and saying, oh, no, she shouldn't do that. Or the lines are wrong. And then just thinking, I have no talent in that area. How dare I comment? <laughs> Don't. A few gins and I get so catty. <laughs> fantastic i think we need to have an online zoom watch of that one then yes <laughs> Bring I'm, in. I'm not watched a single one. Oh no <laughs> well there you go you'd that... enjoy it you'd enjoy it particularly when I they get would. i like reports like that though so yeah, well, I haven't caught up yet on that one, so it's it's, it's all uh, that to catch up this week. Um, so for people who've never heard of cosplay, could you give us a really brief introduction? What is it, uh, Kristen? It's basically, it's a way of, of showing your appreciation for a fandom. Um, some people collect things, see behind me. Other people like to um, go one further and become the character that they love. Um, by either making a costume or you can buy it. Uh, this this one particularly is actually bought, which I've customised. There's nothing wrong in buying a costume to wear. Um, but basically it's wearing a costume, portraying a character, going to events, meeting with other like-minded people, socialising. That's one of the biggest aspects of cosplay for me and I know for Meg as well. Um, doing photo shoots, and it's it's a celebration for that character that you're portraying, really. It um, started. <laughs> no, 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 no. I I, th I thought you would you'd finish there. Sorry, I'm not going to cut you off. Do go on. It started um, all over the world. A lot of the time, the word cosplay is synonymous with Japan, but costuming has been going on in the West for decades. There's the the world conventions. Um, I have a friend who can show me pictures from 1960s where the first um, Star Trek costumes were at conventions and it's sort of multiplied from there. The cosplay from Japan has made it more mainstream. Thank you for that. Um, I, I keep using the term cosplay and costume because I know that some people, and I'm not really sure, is there a definition or, or are there people who get upset by one or the other? Do, is it defined in brackets? I think uh, go on. cosplay literally translates into costume play. So it's kind of like a pop culture reference to what we're doing. Um, and it's kind of slang for it, I guess. But I think people who identify as costumers, they're thinking more for the movies. They're thinking more for, you know, actual industry standards. And um, for them, it's like something different. And maybe it's not necessarily based on a character. It could be their own creation and stuff like that, I think. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. <laughs> a lot of the older generation prefer the term costuming over cosplay as well. Yeah. But it's really, they are really the same thing. Brilliant. And I think you, you mentioned it there about the the, the social uh, aspect of, of cosplay is the fact that every time I go to any of these amazing uh, comic cons conventions, and there are so many, and, and I'm really excited to see that, that last week um, Phantom Publishing did their first uh, return live event. So the live events are starting to happen again. And obviously we've got dates coming up for big events happening later in the year. Um, it is definitely that social aspect so as I arrive at the Excel Centre at, at, at silly o'clock in the morning to go and, and, and work on a stall the thousands of people screaming and meeting each other off the off the tube and meeting outside and the group photo shoots and it's just I, I love that that element of it so I'm assuming that during the last year that's been a really difficult thing for you guys because have you managed to stay friends online and continue that or has that been yeah, lost somewhat? I mean, um, we stay in contact. Obviously, everybody has their own hobbies, which they've sort of branched into. I do a lot of um, drawing and writing now to sort of keep my creative buzz going. Um, but yeah, we've stayed online, talk on Messenger and, and Zoom meetings and things like that. And also um, if playing video games, um, talk during them as well. 
Fantastic. And and what have you been up to then? So what what sort of things have you been have you been making anything or are you are you getting ready for some kind of big season thing? After you, Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> at the moment, no. Um, at home, we're actually decorating. So all our money is being funneled into decorating our new home. Um, but so, as I said before, I've been doing a lot of writing and drawing um, to keep sort of the creative juices flowing as such. Fantastic. And how about you, Meg? Uh, I've been trying to get work in the makeup industry, which as I know you guys are probably aware is a bit dry at the moment, but things are starting to open up again. Um, I was very lucky to be able to work on the Maximus short film, which is going to Cannes Film Festival. It's going to big that up now while I'm here. Um, <laughs> and I'll tell you now, cosplay actually got me into makeup, which then funded like, you know, what I want to do for a career. So it's pretty it's pretty important to me. Um, as for projects I've been working on, I've promised lots of people that I'll be doing projects with them. Have I started any of them? No. <laughs> <laughs> because it's almost like I need that deadline. There's no convention set in stone. And I'm sure people out there will agree that without the con crunch adrenaline to sort of be, I've got a week to create a full armor piece. It's <laughs> it's very difficult to find motivation. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I I know that twelve hours before an event, sticking things together and hoping mm. that the uh, particular finish that you've applied will work and that things won't fall apart. Thing. So it is that focus of having that deadline. It it really oh, does definitely. work. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. I still remember I did Commander Shepard a few years ago when you were doing Liara and I was, <laughs> I very, very badly do not do this, um, was their um, spray painting the armour in the hotel room bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have, I have been finishing off costumes like an hour before I'm heading out. Yeah, I, I, I hate to think what the towels in some of those hotel bedrooms look like after a convention covered in I, I'd love to bring my own. <laughs> yes. Body paint, bring your own towels, the hotel yeah, staff bring your own towels, you. yep. Top tips. I mean, we could do top tips for cosplayers. There's number oh, one. Bring, bring your own towels. <laughs> yeah, bring your own towels and pillowcase. Yes. There we go. Things you don't think about. Um, so there's lots of people joining us here. Um, if you do have any questions, please do drop them into the comments uh, and we will put them to Kristen and Meg. Uh, but um, so uh, we talked about things that you haven't been able to do during lockdown. Um, so let's talk about pre-lockdown. Um, obviously, you're wearing some amazing costumes today, um, but um, you've worked on, if anybody goes and looks at your Facebook pages or your Instagram pages, you've both worked on some stunning uh, uh, costumes. Um, would you, I, just, I don't know, it's like picking a favourite child type again I hate doing this but is there a favorite one for you um so Meg what's is there a favorite costume or a favorite creation process or a result that you were the the best result for you I think best result for me was and again Kristen I'm bigging you up so much here I was inspired by Kristen because of our love for Dragon Age and how she has gone through Flemeth Morrigan but she did her own take on Flemeth so I did my own take on Morrigan, who's quite an iconic character, but she then became like my baby and it became this weird sort of, I was doing the makeup, the wig, the props, the costume, but also having to look into fitness because it's not exactly the most um, covering of costumes. So for body positivity and for me to sort of be like, I did that, that's probably, that's probably my fave. People don't think about things like that, do they, about body and, and how, you know, that is part of the costume and, and you personally, how you feel about uh, doing those things. I think that's a big area. Oh, Huge area. Mm. I mean, I've, su su I've suffered with, you know, my body image for years, but cosplay has really helped me sort of, you know, learn to love myself and to sort of be like, I'm OK in my body as it is. But I know that if I wanted to lose weight, I can, but if there's no pressure anymore and I can still go to a con and have, you know, a giant amount of sushi or the world's most horrifically greasy Domino's pizza and still go out the next day and be confident in myself. <laughs> Other pizza chains are available. <laughs> yeah. We're not endorsed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for me, I, I've 
I have a, um, a chronic illness, so I have um, weight issues because of the medications I have to take. But that hasn't stopped me cosplaying. When I love a character um, to a certain degree, I will adapt that costume to um, be more comfortable for me. So, um, like, I will, if it's, it's a costume that has an exposed stomach, I will change that costume to not be, but it will still be identifiable as that character. Um, I've done that with Morrigan. Uh, her costume, as you said, is not the most um, covering. No. But I've changed it to suit me, and it's still recognisable. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of characters, certainly female characters, well, masculine characters as well, or... or you know, trans characters that that are very much about skin. I mean, if you think about, you know, Star Wars, you've got Darth Talon, you've got this character yeah. that, you know, is beautiful, stunning, a really strong, powerful character, but literally wears a band across her, her chest and a band across the bottom. So th there are lots of costumes like that. So I think it, it, it is a discussion then about what you feel comfortable doing. And yeah. What you f yeah. Um, we started to get some questions in. I've, I've, I realise I've, I've, we've, we've gone off track slightly. Kristen, is there a character or a costume that you've created that is your favourite? I would say it's um, the Morrigan ball gown. That one um, took a lot of work to get to look right, and I've actually remade it twice now. Um, so, yeah, it's the construction, the, the finding the right fabrics, things like that. That one, I feel fantastic in it, and I've had a lot of, compliments from that one you look, look fantastic, fantastic in it <laughs> <laughs> jinx <laughs> yeah we've both seen you in that one you do look amazing in it right questions from the from the audience so Jacqueline would like to know what's the most challenging costume and makeup you've done um so makeup wise Meg do you want to pick up on makeup I think we both can agree because um Kristen was one of the again the inspirations for how heavy she goes in with makeup for cosplays considering she's done you know twilex asari um i have attempted an asari makeup i did a very casual uh aria to Lok from mass effect um and i was actually attempting to do that today but uh, about an hour and a half ago i ripped it all off my face because it wasn't going well so <laughs> um makeup with cosplay and prosthetics take your time, wake up that couple of hours extra earlier, make sure, you know, you've got everything set out and laid out around you because it, it it swings around about sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and that's okay. I think that's that must be a challenge as well because obviously people come into cosplay in different levels. So if you're staying in a local hotel at a convention and you can get up early and you've got the bathroom and you can put it all on, but I've seen people at, in car parks, I've seen people trying to uh, uh, put prosthetics on and get into costume in toilets and things. So yeah. it's it's a difficult one. So, uh, and how about you, uh, Kristen, costume? Yeah. Most challenging? I, uh, I try and work out to the convention I'm doing what level of um, cosplay I will do. So if I know I'm in a hotel, that's when I'll do the prosthetics, the heavy makeup, because I know I've got the time and the room to make a complete mess of the entire hotel room and clear it up afterwards. Um, but if I'm doing like a day event, then no, I will do something that's a lot easier to transport, a lot easier to get into, especially in a toilet. Um, I've done that many, many times before. Um, so I would say the most challenging aspect for me would be getting in a lot of the costumes. I need someone else to get me into them. Um, especially video game costumes that don't have obvious ways of getting into them, I have to then make them up. Uh, my Liara costume is basically vac sealed onto me. I have to have somebody do me, zip me up at the back and then put the armor on the top and that's it. Once I'm in the costume, I can't get out of it until the end of the day. Um, so you have to uh, think about toilet breaks, how much water you're going to drink during a convention, um, how hot you're going to get in that costume as well. You've got to think about all those things, um, especially with the most the more elaborate costumes. It's not all glamour, is it? It's not all walking oh, around looking God, good. No. <laughs> God, no. I think when Last we did aspects, 
I remember us going up to the hotel room and I was there with Kristen hot gluing her costume onto her, ignoring the fact it was going to hit her skin. And I was like, are you sure you want me to do this? And she was just there opera singing through the pain. <laughs> and that's not something we recommend anyone no, does. No, but this do is not the follow our example there. <laughs> this is the stuff cosplayers for some reason will put themselves through. You mm -hmm. won't eat, you won't drink properly. Your food consumption is just caffeine or you know, chicken nuggets for three days. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and yeah, it's almost like for three days, you forget how to human just for the sake of a costume. And yeah. um, I think as we've matured as costumers, um, you don't have to do that. <laughs> I love this idea of, of you opera singing through the pain. Next time, yeah. can we do a live of that, please? <laughs> 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 oh, that was that's absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, I, I do like the idea of, of you maturing uh, in, into it. So as you learn, as you as you you hone your craft, knowing that there are those things that, that, that you need to do. Are there places where where people who are new to cosplay can go to learn those tips or to get advice or to get support? Are there online oh. groups that, that, that talk to each other? Yeah, there's I mean, there's loads of groups on Facebook. One of the main places to go Um if you're into a certain uh, uh, game or something, there are groups that are dedicated to that game. There's one for Mass Effect called the N7 Elite, and they'll have um, lots of people on there. So if you come in there saying, I want to make a Commander Shepard armor, there'll be people who've made them who can say, well, here, these are the patterns we used. This is the process we used. This is the material we used um, and give advice there. Um, there are also generalised cosplay groups, UK Cosplay is one, where people can ask for advice on specifics. Kamui Cosplay has their own group as well. So there's loads of loads on Facebook, Discord is another one, Instagram, they all have their people that are quite willing to offer advice to new people. And particularly for like the younger generation, I found that TikTok's become quite a big place for younger people getting involved with cosplay i don't look it but i am 27 so i'm not <laughs> <laughs> i'm not one of the younger people anymore um but there's lots of people on tiktok who are just having a go and you know they're doing the fun videos they're doing makeup transformations and they're just playing and learning and they're bouncing off each other and taking advice from each other and it's it's quite a nice community actually I love that. I, I, I think one of the things that we find at the Space Centre is when we get the, the groups that costume together because they they see each other online, but then there's twice a year that they'll meet in person and they all come together and have have a, a shared experience. Um, and they're very, very much about supporting each other. Um, I, I think there are there are definitely um things out there that aren't quite so supportive. Um, I was aware of um, a particular person found the fabric that was used for Idris, the, the TARDIS, but wouldn't oh. share where she had found that. And, and I think that's probably the most challenging thing for me that I found. Yeah, I mean, there's a balancing act between how much research you've done for a costume. You've gone, you've done all the legwork. Part of you doesn't want to share everything because you want those people to also learn from that experience to research for themselves as well but you can still give helpful advice um you it, it's it's a hard balancing act really mm -hmm. um i've i've researched costumes and found the exact fabric and i'll wait say a month before then i'll publish where I've, where I've found that fabric so other people can. But it gives me a chance to um, promote myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is. It's like you don't want to gatekeep, but you don't want to give away your trade secrets at the same exactly. time. You want to be able to give the advice that you know will benefit them, but they haven't gone through the journey that you have to learn from those mistakes. So, like, I know for a fact Spirit Gum is banned from my makeup kit it is the worst thing to remove. It's painful. You have, and particularly again, if you haven't eaten or drunk all day, it's just like ripping your skin off. So now I use Prosade, but that's something that I had to learn. <laughs> but that's again, it's something I'm more than happy to share with people. So if you've got spirit gum in your kits, get it out. It's 
don't use it. <laughs> you see, that one in itself is you don't want people to go through the pain that you went through. So let's share yeah. with that. Um, but also, I, I did find some fabric that was used. Uh, Trisha Bigger used a particular fabric on a Star Wars uh, costume. Um, and then I found it. And you'd have had to have taken out a mortgage to have been able to afford this particular fabric. Yeah. I'm Happy to share that I one. That. <laughs> and going there is painful. <laughs> Yeah. But she, she's also, that, that shop is actually very helpful. They actually have a book of all the fabrics that they um, gave or sold to Trisha Bigger for the costumes. And you can actually ask to see that book with all the swatches in it. And then pass out. And then pass out, yeah. <laughs> uh, Right, just doing a quick shout out. Barbarella, mad cat lady uh, hey. wants to say, hi, Chris. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Barbara, if you've got any questions for either Chris or Meg, do drop them into the comments. Um, Elliot, who uh, works on the National Space Centre team, you may well have, have, have spoken to him. He's the guy that did all the back work for, to make all of this happen. So well done, Elliot. But he's a bit of a geek. He says, quick question from me. Can I ask Meg, are you cosplaying Jubilee from X-Men today? I am. Thank you. Um <laughs> I actually started this during lockdown. This was an old trench coat that I had that I've spray painted yellow. So it's got that distressed look. I will be going and doing details with airbrush. But um, yeah, after my disaster trying to put a full Asari gear on this morning, I had this sudden epiphany of, I have the coat. <laughs> <laughs> I have the wig. I have the thing. So um, yeah, and it's something that I want to really finish and bring to a convention when they open. Fantastic. Elliot, when we get back to work, vegan donuts are coming your way. <laughs> <laughs> he got the question right. Um, both of you guys, you, you look amazing. Uh, and the costumes that you do, um, people after this session, like I say, we will put the links to your Facebook and Instagram in the conversation so people can go and look at all the other amazing uh, costumes that you, you have both done. Um, but uh, we talk about this idea of professional cosplay. So people who are coming into it, are aspiring to create amazing costumes become these characters or just dress up for fun i mean there's so many reasons to come into cosplay you don't have to do it to movie accuracy but is there such a thing as professional cosplay oh yeah yeah definitely people have made their uh, businesses out of it i can name as kamui cosplay uh wall cosplay lightning cosplay um they've all taken off uh, Yaya Han is one of the biggest, um, and they all started doing what everybody else does. Um, Kamui Cosplay often posts pictures of when she started, and it's quite inspirational to see that, you know, she started in the simple stuff, didn't know what she was doing, and now she's producing books and videos to help other people. Um, but yeah, they've made a business out of it, and all good for them. 100%. I mean, it's it's really weird like people sometimes use cosplay to help them do a different career so like chris mini he runs the be more shonen and he uses goku and anime shonen characters to promote his um fitness regimes and like as a personal trainer and gives advice to like how you can aspire to get those superhero bodies so and again like the people are doing self-help people are being hired and commissioned by huge gaming companies like blizzard like and bethesda to actually go and help promote video games and movies um i think even for marvel and stuff they're inviting cosplayers to come to the red carpet meet the actors and i think it was in infinity war we know a couple of people who went to that um went to that premiere and they got to meet all the actors in costume and stuff like that so i think it's sort of like you can be professional you can be amateur it's but I think the heart of it stays the same throughout all of those ventures, which is quite nice. Yeah, they definitely all still love doing what they do. They're still cosplaying for the love of those characters. And I think you, you mentioned there Bethesda. I mean, I think when brands in, engage with the cosplay community and realise, and no disrespect to you, but that you are an asset to them. You you oh, you are going out and doing more for their brand than than they can afford to ever do in TV advertising or you know uh, the the five hundred first of the Star Wars guys. Those those people have been keeping Star Wars alive between the trilogy films, and so Definitely, they yeah. they they were an asset for marketing. Um, and uh, Loki, um, I know that when um one of the the films came out, they they took all of these great cosplay Loki, Loki cosplayers onto the red carpet on Leicester Square and it was a it was a huge thing 
Um, so have you have you engaged with any of the brands? Have you have you got involved with uh, the brands that you, yeah. you portray? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, we got to meet both me and Meg got to meet um, the marketing team for the UK side of Bethesda, um, and they invited us to their headquarters in London. So we got to have a tour around there and um, promote help promote their their stuff, which was nice. Walked um, half half in cosplay all the way through Leicester Square, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> Got um, changed I, to the Bethesda toilets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Bethesda toilets, <laughs> which are very nice. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> yep, yep, glamorous life. Um, and I was, I used to be part of uh, a Star Wars group, and we've done back then. We did uh, publicity um, events, lots of events for charity as well. Um, selling the good name of Lucas Arts. Yeah, no, I, I I know the club you refer to, um, and um, I, I like I say, I think there are groups out there. The Dalek Builders, you know, they they keep um, people really happy. Although saying that, my favourite story of an event that we had at the Space Centre was um, a very very focused Doctor Who fan arrived at the Space Centre, saw a huge array of Daleks in our courtyard as they arrived forgetting he had his two-year-old daughter in his hand walked down the ramp towards these Daleks because he was so fixated with these amazing characters and then realised that his two-year-old didn't like Daleks. <laughs> no. And 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 I think afterwards he had to do quite a big clean up, shall we say? So so oh, she wasn't very happy. Bless her. He was absolutely devastated. It must be must be said. But um, you know, it's th those those moments where you are transfixed with the character because you can meet them they're not behind a screen yeah. they're not on a game they're there in person for you so and and you guys create those moments for the fans um just... oh definitely there's some there's been some amazing positive aspects when i did maleficent um i had little girls coming up to me tugging on my my dress and as soon as i said hello beastie their eyes lit up like, oh my God, you're Maleficent. Um, so that that was that was wonderful, definitely, definitely amazing experience. Do you get the nice sort of awe and wonder? I wear giant prosthetic teeth and fake blood, and I get little ones coming up to me wanting to see it all and sort of being oh, like, yeah. yes, you're not very nice. And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> that i mean yeah you you are creating these special moments but also kids love gore <laughs> oh definitely but you've got all the parents trying to herd them away and the kids are just like fascinated and i'm like no no it's fine like i'm not gonna eat your child um <laughs> but the parents are suddenly really protective and the kids are just curious they've never seen this sort of thing before and it's really it's really sweet to see yeah thank you for creating special moments every day even if it is terrifying people <laughs> Um, so you've mentioned some of the, the, the games that you've made costumes from and some of the films and TV programmes and things. How do you go about choosing what you will make next? Is it is it a conscious decision as a group or do you just say, oh, I've seen this and I love it? Um, for me, yeah, it ha I have to have that resonance with the character to cosplay them now. I have to know that when I wear it, I'm going to enjoy it. I've done... Uh, group cosplays where I've been uh, I've chosen a character because they don't have that one in that group and I haven't enjoyed it as much so from now on that's what I do if, if a character speaks to me from a video game or film I'll pick those and how about you Meg I think that's really important that if you're not going to enjoy the character you're going to cosplay don't do it it's not worth it I've done some cosplays for friends. I haven't even played the game, but I'll still go ahead and join in because, you know, I don't want to be left out. Um, but now it's quite fun. I've got loads of friends saying, oh, Meg, you'd really suit this character. And it's a character I've never thought I could pull off, but they're saying you can go ahead and do this. And um, there is one person out there who, if they are watching this, you know who you are, has convinced me to do over four cosplays with them next year. And it's all characters again. Didn't think I'd have the confidence to do, but having that sort of like support and yeah I'm really excited to do some projects with them great working with creative people and enjoying the experience that that's part of the process it's not just putting that costume on and being at a convention it's that whole oh, 
yeah i mean i've worked on costumes with groups before that uh, it's just been that enjoyment the the parties of of making obviously we can't do those in person at the moment but uh, yeah it's a bit depressing um and i'm so glad that you make things that make you happy as well otherwise you would have to go on our cosplay bingo game because we see so many of certain characters at a lot of these conventions and it's it's like do you want to play that character do you want to play that character or are you just doing it because it's that character it's I suppose. popular yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean um, the the, Ooh, the one that we're gonna the one we're gonna see in a lot of conventions soon is um, Lady Dim Dimitrescu from Resident Evil. She is going to be a popular character at conventions, that's for sure. Loki will be another one because of the new show. Um, yeah, it, it, there's always a case of finding characters that are going to be the big one for the next. Oh event. yeah. Do you do that or do you go the opposite direction? <laughs> Mine tend to be obscure. <laughs> yeah i mean if i like the character and it happens to be popular then i i'll probably do it i mean i'm doing some things from skyrim um in the future uh, a very popular character in the my hero academia i'm doing hawks and like the fandom is obsessed with him and i'm like i'm not doing it for like them i'm doing it because i like the character and it's an excuse for me to eat kfc like canonically and just have like a bit of a derpy day pretending to be half a bird man so it's sort of i sort of look at how i can enjoy the con or the day that i'm going to be in that con sort of think about things i can do that i'll enjoy i like that i'm gonna go and find a character that does all of those things just to keep me happy <laughs> That's brilliant. Thank you so much. And just to let you know, Krista, when you mentioned those specific characters, the IT guy is nod nodding furiously over here in, a in agreement with you about who we're going to be seeing yeah, very soon. Yeah, 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 yes. Um, uh, so we, we've got all that to look forward to. Uh, I can't wait to get back to cons, it must be said. I really, um, I really just want to see what those people again and I want to see that creativity and enjoy it. And also just just to say to people well done you know you've, you've done something that has made a big difference tinkerbell we had a, a young girl came to a stall dressed as tinkerbell exactly the same as you as your maleficent having a conversation little girl comes up behind her and instantly she was tinkerbell and yeah. she made that little tiny girl's day it was brilliant so i can't wait to get back to them um oh, i'm going to talk a little bit about a controversial subject have you ever created a costume that now has controversy around it that you feel that you cannot wear anymore i am going to mention i'm not going to mention the, the genre that we're talking about potentially but have you created costumes that you don't wear anymore because of controversy yeah <laughs> <laughs> i think if you have you're lying so what happens then do you just put it aside put it in a bag pass it on about it. it's in the past yeah, doesn't need to come back up again. <laughs> no, I mean, I learned from my mistake. Um, at the time, I didn't realise it was a problem. Um, but yeah, it was yeah. a case of, oh, well, there we go. Learned from my mistake, won't do that again. Yeah, and I think, again, it's, it's going back to that, you mature as you learn. Like my first cosplay is the one that we shall not name. Um, it, I was 13, 14 when I did it. So how was I to know that back then it was going to have this sort of impact if i were to do it today um so yeah it's definitely it's a learning curve i think a lot of people have learned from those costumes but yeah you just put it in a bag and you never see it again or you destroy it <laughs> have, a, have a ceremony like a viking burial <laughs> yeah. mine mine was easy because it was in the wardrobe for a long time and it was made from a synthetic leather and synthetic leather doesn't last it will break down um, so, yeah, I, I took it out of the wardrobe, realised it was falling apart and that was like, it's time to throw it out now. <laughs> um, do you ever go back to any costumes that you've done in the past and, and just and, and sort of remake them or, or bring them out again? Or, or, or is that is that something you do or do you have a season that you wear? I'll wear them as long until I can't fit in them. <laughs> I, I would love to still be able to wear the costumes I made back in the 90s, but I'm, I'm not the same size, so that's not happening. Um, but yeah, there'll, there'll be costumes, especially ones that have taken a lot of work to do. I'll wear them until I can't wear them anymore. Like Liara, for example. Yeah, 
just wear them to death if you've enjoyed yeah. making it and you enjoy the experience you had in it you're going to have those happy memories in it and you know that if you wear that costume it's going to make you happy so yeah wear them till they're dead and threadbare and then you remake it again <laughs> yep <laughs> no costume ever dies we just titivate <laughs> yes <laughs> Is a costume ever finished though? In in the same light, do you it, are you ever completely happy, or do you do an event and just go? Oh, I just need to weather it slightly there, or I just need to do that. All the time, particularly with weathering costumes like yeah. Fallout, the vault suits. They some might need to go through the wash because you do get stinky at conventions, and um, that will wash away all your hard worked weathering if you haven't used the right paints and you have to do it all over again and it's a never-ending cycle <laughs> yeah pretty much i mean um the, the fallout costumes because of the game you can um add different armors and things like that um the costume will progress as it goes um but there are costumes which i can say are 100 percent finished uh, my morrigan uh, flemeth costumes like that i can say yeah i've i've made that I'm happy with it. You're the one. I knew there was a cosplayer somewhere that that, that did have a comic costume that was finished. <laughs> it's you. It's that one. <laughs> I've never finished a costume in my life. <laughs> so I always think like, oh, I can do a lining on it or I can add this bit of armor or I can change this to tech. Like there's just something always there. Um, it must be said, I did love the fact that you just said that you had to wash your, your costumes. Um, I've been to events that should have been uh, sponsored by Fabrice. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It doesn't take yeah. much to put your costume in the wash. If it's bought, it'll be, it'll be like tumbled or, you know, washing machine safe. If you've made it, you can hand wash it. Like you yep. can literally get a bathtub and fill it with fabric cleaning yeah. or you can even get sprays like is it alcohol you can like vodka, vodka. you can use to spray vodka yeah the cheapest vodka you can get put it in a spray bottle and it will uh, kill the bacteria from um areas which you can't wash that yeah. is a little costuming tip there i always there have gym no events excuse. <laughs> no excuse for stinky costumes nope. so the next time somebody asks me why i smell of gin it's because i was cleaning my costume <laughs> yeah, yeah that works <laughs> That excuse works. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, Meg, you've mentioned some of the costumes that you're currently working on for pe working with people. How about you, Chris? Is there anything that you would like to do in the future or is there anything on the, the, the work table as we speak? There is a huge list of costumes I'd love to do. Um, but yeah, due to the COVID um, and lockdown and my partner being in, on furlough for a long time, obviously my budget is down the pan. Um, but once everything gets started up again, there are a couple of costumes. Again, they're from video games. Um, I want to do um, Emily Coldwin from Dishonored. Um, she's one of my favourite characters of all time, and I really want to portray her. I even have the tattoo. <laughs> nice. um, and then Evie Fry from Assassin's Creed, uh, another character that I absolutely love. So yeah, those two are my on my list. The costume that is half finished is my own take on Yennefer from The Witcher um, based on the, her book description. Wow, I love that. And I love that you're doing the book description rather than the TV programme. Uh, IT guy off screen just said, I've played her on both occasions you mentioned. <laughs> it just sounds wrong when you hear that, but he does mean that he played her in the game. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> in Dishonored and Assassin's Creed. So yeah, it's a very strange conversation we have in this house. <laughs> Um, so um, I will, after this uh, conversation, I will drop all of your links uh, into the comments. So if people want to go and find you, uh, they can do. Um, and if you have anything else you want to share, please do feel free to drop any groups or links in the comments so that people can find out uh, about how to get into cosplay. Um, we've just about run out of time, I'm afraid, which is really depressing because I think we could have a conversation going on for days. Um, <laughs> I would like to say sincerely thank you so much, not only for giving up your time to do this session, uh, but also for spending hours in advance getting to look so amazing to be part of this. I literally got up and washed my hair and put a top on. I mean, you know, it's not exactly <laughs> difficult. So, you know, it's, it's very much appreciated. Um, 
Thank you Thank for picking you for having us. us. No, it's been it's been an absolute joy. Um, I hope that um, people do go and have a look at your your pages and find out more and get into cosplay because, you know, you can do it in your own way. You can do it on your own budget and you can do it so that you meet like minded, brilliant people who enjoy the same things that you do. Um, yeah. And it's a, just a lovely way to do it. So and there's I, no age limit. There is no age limit. And, and no right or wrong way. And and also, you know, body, body positivity and however you want to do it, do yeah. it the way that makes you happy. So um, and, and we can all be a little bit um, pointy fingers at times. So let's all step away from that. We've had, you know, 14 months to, to get over ourselves. Let's <laughs> make sure that we support everybody doing this in, in the way that they want to do it. So um, and that's not a comment to you guys, by the way. That's a comment to some of the things I see written under photographs after conventions. So I'm going to I'm going to be more supportive and more positive. Yeah, we can all do that. Um, stay safe. And I sincerely look forward to seeing you both uh, at uh, an event very soon in the future, I hope. Yes, I hope so. Um, let's, let's see each other soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. There we go. That was Kristen and Meg. Um, as I said, after this conversation, we'll drop links into uh, the comments. So please, uh, in a couple of moments time, do go and click on those and uh, do go and see their amazing uh, images on Facebook of all the costumes that they have created. They are truly stunning. Uh, stay with us. We've got loads of things happening throughout the day. Uh, coming up at 12 o'clock, we will have a conversation with Colin uh, Baker and Nicola Bryant. Uh, so we're going to go and have a short break now. So time for a break. Uh, you've got about... Oh, 12 minutes. I'll see you in 12 minutes. Bye-bye.